Most people get their first introduction into the lore of Greek mythology through children's movies, such as Disney's Hercules. Others learn about epic Greek tales of gods and goddesses in high school. However, most people never learn the origin of the mythos of Greek mythology and the source of the stories they hear and see growing up. Today, we'll discuss the Greek Theogony, an epic poem by famous poet Hesiod, which lays out the origins of the Greek mythology universe, including stories of the gods, goddesses, and ancient Greek people. Let's get into it. Theogony, written somewhere around 700 BCE, is not only the foundational piece of literature in Greek mythology, but is also one of the oldest works describing the Pantheon as well. This poem, along with other famous works, such as Homer's epics, the Iliad, and the Odyssey, includes some of the most famous mythological tales of the Greeks, including popular characters such as Zeus, Heracles, and Perseus. Theogony is not only full of heroic and tragic stories, it also serves as a genealogy of sorts, using interwoven family arcs to show that everyone is connected, somehow. The stories contained within the poem take the readers from the very beginning, pure chaos, into the power struggle between several factions for control of the universe, ending in the establishment of the gods of Olympia, many of whom you're probably aware of. It is described as being the equivalent to the Bible's book of Genesis, to Greek mythology, setting the stage for the stories to come. According to Theogony, in the beginning, chaos suddenly arose without warning. Chaos gave birth to several offspring, including Gaia, the Earth, Eros, sexual desire, Tartarus, the underworld, Erebus, darkness, and Nyx, night. These five entities then paired off together to form additional ones, including Ether, brightness, Uranus, sky, Himera, day, Uriah, mountains, and Pontus, sea. From this set of offspring, Uranus or Uranus and Gaia came to reproduce a total of three groups of offspring, the Titans, who were extremely powerful and would be the first rulers of the universe, the Cyclops, three one-eyed giants who were every bit as menacing as they were ugly, and the Hecatoncheres, a group of giants who each had a hundred hands and who were even more powerful than the Titans. However, Uranus was horrified at the sight of the Hecatoncheres and they were eventually imprisoned beneath the earth. Eventually, one of the Titans, Kronos, who took up the role of leader of the group, married his sister, fellow Titan, Rhea. From this pairing, a number of familiar faces were born, including Zeus, god of thunder, Poseidon, god of the sea, and Hades, god of the underworld. Due to a foretold prophecy that Kronos's eventual offspring would overthrow him as the leader of the cosmos, the Titan swallowed each of the children that Rhea gave birth to. However, Rhea managed to trick Kronos into sparing Zeus, which in turn led to him vomiting up all of their children. In retaliation, the offspring of Kronos banded together, along with the Cyclops and Prometheus and Epimetheus, two Titans, to wage an epic war against the Titans for control of the universe. Zeus, Poseidon, and the others found a home on Mount Olympus, where they would remain. The clash of the Titans, fueled by Kronos's attempted murder of his children, waged on long and hard for ten years. The battle shook the very fibers of the universe, and there were many back-and-forth momentum-changing moments. However, eventually, Zeus unleashed a diabolical plan. He freed the Hecatoncheres from their imprisonment in Tartarus, causing the Earth to shake violently, like no other earthquake ever felt previously. This momentary stunning moment allowed Zeus and the other gods of Olympus to gain the upper hand. Zeus sent a rain of his thunderbolts at the Titans, a direct hit. The Titans were sent to Tartarus, where they would remain imprisoned. Just as the battle appeared to be won and order was set to be restored, Gaia, who was extremely saddened by her children's defeat, mated with Tartarus to form Typhon, a last-ditch effort to swing the tide of the war. Typhon was an evil monstrosity, having dragon heads on his shoulders and snakes for hair, and being extremely large in size. His eyes shot fire, and he looked to be the ultimate game-changer for the Titans. However, Zeus was able to handle him as well, and the universe's control was ultimately placed in the hands of the gods. From this point on, with the Olympians in control of the cosmos, they would go on to further reproduce. In the Theogony, Zeus is said to have taken a whopping seven wives, all of which he had children with. Zeus also had numerous children with women outside of wedlock, 
of which were some of the famous characters in Greek lore, such as Dionysus and Heracles. Other gods also produced famous offspring, such as Poseidon's son Triton, the messenger god of the sea, and Eros and Phobos, love and fear, who came from Aphrodite's womb. While there is plenty of information contained within Theogony that is widely known, there is a fair share that most people are wholly unaware of. For example, because of his assistance to the gods during the Clash of the Titans, Prometheus was spared eternal damnation by Zeus and was instead allowed to remain free. However, Prometheus was caught attempting to steal the sacred eternal fire from Mount Olympus, which forced Zeus's hand. Prometheus was then chained to a cliff for the rest of time, where an eagle would constantly peck at his flesh. The term Pandora's box also stems from this part of the story, as Zeus ordered the creation of Pandora, a beautiful woman used as a sort of Trojan horse to release the evils of mankind into the world as a direct response to Prometheus attempting to steal the forbidden fire. Another lesser known part of Theogony is that among Zeus's many wives, the fourth was actually another sister of his, Demeter, from which he fathered Persephone, the eventual tragic bride of his brother Hades. As you can see, there are countless recognizable names throughout Greek mythology, but few actually realize just how connected all of them truly are to one another. While the Clash of the Titans is certainly the most famous war in Greek mythology, it may not actually be the most important in terms of the overall lore. That prestigious title arguably goes to a war that took place years later, known as the Gigantomachy, the Olympians' war against the giants. While not mentioned directly in Theogony, supplemental works lay out this larger-than-life battle and describe it as the moment that the gods and goddesses of Mount Olympus cemented their place as eternal rulers of the cosmos. The war with the giants began after one of their own, Alcyoneus, was caught stealing cows from Helios, god of the sun. A prophecy came to the gods, stating that the only way to defeat the giants would be with the assistance of a mortal. On the other side, the giant's mother, Gaia, once again did all she could to help overthrow the gods. She searched the earth for a mystical plant that would shield the giants from being harmed. However, Zeus instructed Eos, Selene, and Helios to all stop shining and proceeded to collect all of the earth's plants for himself. He then rallied his troops and the battle began. Heracles engaged in combat with Alcyoneus, and although was seemingly winning, it was discovered that Alcyoneus couldn't be slayed on his own homeland soil. So, Heracles, being the cunning hero that he was, dragged the giant away from his homeland and killed him swiftly. One by one, the gods picked off the giants until none of them remained, and the gods remained in power. Stories depict many of the giants being buried under islands, and many attribute natural occurrences, such as earthquakes and volcanic eruptions, to the giants shifting inside of their tombs. Theogony is a classic, and is the essential staple that ties all of Greek mythology together. From laying out the creation of the world, the genealogy of the deities, and detailing the epic clash of the titans to determine the fate of the universe, it is arguably one of the most pivotal works of literature of all time. What do you think? Were you aware of just how connected the entirety of Greek mythology's characters were? Have you ever heard of the gods' battle against the giants? Who is your favorite Greek god and why? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And as always, please like and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks.